In this video, we're going to take a look at the Django templating language and we're going to look at some best practices for that. And we're also going to take a look at this package called Slippers. This is a UI component framework for Django, as it says on the GitHub page. And it's built on top of the Django templating language and this allows you to create components that can accept HTML as well as other context. So we're going to take a look at that later in the video. But before we do that, we're going to go to VS Code just now and we're going to take a look at this project. This is a very basic setup that we have. We have this index.html file which extends the base.html template and that base.html template is this file here. And as you can see, it has Tailwind CSS imported as a script tag. In this video, we're going to build some components using the Django Slippers library and Tailwind CSS. So to begin with, let's go to the Django Slippers documentation. And as you can see, in order to install this library, you can use pip. So we're going to copy that command and we're going to paste that into our terminal here. And once that's installed, we can then go ahead and add slippers to our installed apps within the settings.py file. So if we scroll down to installed apps, we're going to add slippers to this list here and that will allow us to use these template tags. Now what we're going to start by doing is creating a card component that we're going to use throughout this video. And I'm going to borrow some code from Tailwind Elements, this card component that you can get from Tailwind in order to make that card. As you can see here, it's a very simple card on this page. We're going to show the code and we're going to copy paste that into our index.html template. So let's go to that template and we'll paste that in here instead of hello world. And then we can run the server and we can take a look at what this looks like on our page. So here we have a card that's got some dummy text within it. Let's imagine now that we needed another card on this page. And this is very common when you're building cards, you might have many of them. So let's now copy and paste that again and we'll paste it below the original card. So now we have two cards, as you can see here, one on top of the other. Now this works fine, but it's in violation of one of the best practices in programming, and that's not to repeat yourself when you have similar code. Now, if we go back to the template, let's imagine we wanted to change the color of this button from blue to red. Now the color is controlled by this Tailwind class, background blue 600. And because we've repeated this code, we need to now find all places that use this background color and change that to red. When we do that and save, if we go back to the page, we now see the, the button is red. So while that works, it's not ideal because you have to find all occurrences of very similar code and change them all. What we'd like to do instead is break this repeated code out into its own file. So what we're going to do is in this partials folder here, we're going to create a new file and it's going to be called card.html. And this is going to be a dedicated file that holds the code for these cards. So let's copy and paste this into the card.html and we'll save that. So what we can now do is go back to our original template, the index.html, and we can remove these two hard coded cards. And we can now use the include template tag from Django's templating language. And we're going to include the core partials card.html file. So we've basically encapsulated the code for the card, the HTML code, within this one file. And now we can include it in multiple places as many times as we want. So here we've included this twice. If we go back to the page and refresh, we see that we get the same effect. But in this case, we only have an include statement and there is no repetition of very similar code here. And now if we wanted to change some aspect of this card, for example, the background color to green in this case, we only need to change it in one place. And that's a massive benefit when you have this repeated code throughout your code base, break it out into its own components or files, and then you can include those as you need to. And when we go back to the page and refresh, we see that the button is now green. Now there is, of course, one question that might arise here. How do we customize these cards so that they have different content, even though they maintain the same styles? For example, we might want to have a card title that's specific to each card. So how do we achieve that when we're using one template? One thing we can do with this include template tag, we can pass additional context to this using keyword arguments. And this is documented in Django's documentation here for the include template tag. If we scroll down, you can see this code here where we include a particular template and we're passing additional keyword arguments such as person and greeting. And we use the with statement to do that. So what I'm going to do in our template here is we're going to pass a specific title to each card using the with. So for the first card, we'll specify title one. 
And for the second card, we'll give the context of title two. And once we've done that, we can go into the partial for this card. And instead of hard coding some text here, we can get rid of that and we can pass the title in here. And the title refers to this key here that we're passing down to the template as an additional piece of context. So if we save all of that and go back to the page and refresh, we now see that we have a specific title for each card. And you could do that with the body of the card. You can do that with anything you want within your partial. So this setup works fine. We can pass context down to our partials and we can render out specific bits of content. So what's the motivation for Django slippers? If we go back to the documentation here in this introduction section, the motivation section here will give you a bit more information about that. And this section states that it's quite common to include partials and pass lots of different keyword arguments down to those partials. And that's quite verbose. You might have a template that uses many of these different components and that can get quite messy and hard to maintain if you're passing a lot of different keyword arguments. Another issue with the include template tag is that you cannot pass down HTML with that template tag. And while you can work around that by creating a custom template tag, that is not ideal for some developers, particularly front end developers who want to quickly get something done without necessarily writing a lot of Python. So if we go to the getting started section here, this will show you how to create a component using Django slippers. And the process is quite similar to a normal partial. We create some code within an HTML file and it's just a normal Django template that's very similar to one you would include. However, one thing to notice is this here, the children that's being rendered out. And this renders out children of the component when this component is used. And we're going to see exactly what that means in just a second. Now, one thing we need to do, which is slightly different, is we need to register the components that we're creating. And the easiest way to do that is to create a components.yaml file. And that should live in the root template folder. So let's create that file just now. If we go to the templates directory, it should live in here and it's going to be called components.yaml. And what we need to put in this file is this kind of thing here. We have a components top level key and then we have the name of our component followed by a link to where that components file lives. So I'm going to paste the code for my component here. It's going to be a card component. We're going to call it card and that will be found within the core partials card.html file. And that is the file that we've already created here containing that code. And when we've done that, we're now ready to use this component. Let's see how to do that now. First of all, make sure you save the components.yaml file and then we're going to go back to the index.html file. Now to use Django slippers, we load the template tags with this load slippers at the top of the template. And let's cross over to the documentation. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see the load slippers at the top here. And to actually use the component, we have this syntax here. We've got the component's name, which is card. And before that, we have the hash to determine that this is a slippers component. We can then pass keyword arguments to that, just like we can with the include statement. But notice as well, we can also embed HTML within the body of the component. And to close off the component, we have the name of the component again, but this time before that we have a slash. And this HTML here that's embedded within the declaration, that is what's rendered out when we use the children here like that. And this is quite similar in some ways to the props.children from React, if you're familiar with that. So now we know how to actually call up a component. Let's go back to the template and we're gonna do that here. We're gonna get rid of these two include statements. And this time we will use the hash with the name of the component and that's card. And we're gonna pass two bits of context to that card. First of all, the title. And let's say that the title of this one is video game. And we're also gonna pass a name to that. So let's say name one. And then we can close off the card using a slash and then the name of the component. And remember, we can embed any HTML we want within this component. For now, let's just create a span tag and we'll say hello. So now that we have that, we're gonna create a second component here, just below here. And let's say this time we've got a pair of shoes and the name we're passing in, let's say this time is name two. And remember we can change the HTML that's passed to the component and this will be rendered as the children. So this time we're gonna pass a couple of different HTML tags. We've got a paragraph tag and a small tag. So let's now go to the card.html component. Let's now change the hard coded text and this time we're going to render something different. Let's now render the children, which is remember the HTML that's embedded here within the component declaration. So now that we've got that, let's stop the Django development server and we can restart that server to make sure that the slippers template tags are loaded. 
And then if we go back to our page and refresh, you see we now have new components here. The titles here are specific to what was passed in as additional context with that keyword. And the content that you see within the component is specific to the HTML that was passed down within the declaration. And that's a key difference from include. We can pass any HTML we want down using these components. So this is very useful if you have components that might have small HTML changes within them, but you want to maintain the overall style of that component. So that's an example using Django Slippers components. We're now going to create another component for a button. So let's create a file here, an HTML file called button.html to encapsulate the button. And this is going to be a trivial example, but we're going to demonstrate how you might want to split your user interface into multiple discrete components. What we're going to do is borrow a button from Flowbyte. So let's go to the Flowbyte page here. And what we're going to use is one of these payment buttons. And I'm going to use this Visa button here. So I'm going to copy the code for that button and we're going to paste it into this new template that we've created. And because we intend to make this a Django Slippers component, we need to register it within the components file. So I'm going to add another component with the name button that points to that new file. So let's now go to our card component here and we have a hard coded button. We're going to remove that and replace it with this new button. So let's delete that. And because we're using Django slippers, we need to load the slippers template tags into this partial as well. And then we can simply render the button out as so. And that's because we're not passing any additional parameters to the button. So we can use this shorthand syntax. And this refers to the name of the component that we registered here in the components.yaml file. File, and the syntax that we've used here to declare this component in line, you can read about that on this page of the slippers documentation. And it's this section here, if we don't need to pass a label or if the component doesn't use children, then instead we can use that inline syntax. Now as before, we can pass down context to this button. For example, we might want to pass down a title. Now we can also optionally pass HTML down to this button. So for example, if we look at the button here, we've got this hard coded pay with visa text. We might want to customize that to say buy the particular product that we're looking at, for example, the video game or the pair of shoes. So let's go back to the card template and we're going to see how to do that now. Now we're going to have to make this not an inline component, but another normal component like this. And that means we need to end the button tag here with the slash button. Now the HTML that we're going to pass within this is going to simply say buy title. Remember the title refers to what's passed down to the card from its parent component, which is this one here, as you can see, video game and pair of shoes. So the card.html component has access to title in its context, and we can then use that in our button here as the HTML. And what we need to do now is render that as children. So we're gonna remove the pay with visa text, and we're gonna replace that with children. Remember that this refers to whatever is passed within the component declaration. So let's save these files and we can stop the Django development server again and we can restart the server. Now I think you have to restart the server every time you create a new component. So keep that in mind when you're making these components. But if we go back to the page now, you see that the button has been customized and it now displays text for the specific item. So we've now created two components, a card component that is a child of this index.html page. And within the card itself, we have another sub component that's for the button. And we're breaking down this user interface into multiple components that can then be included anywhere you need them within your website. And it might be common for a card such as this one to become a wrapper for multiple subcomponents. We've got one here, this button, but you might have many different subcomponents, perhaps an image, you might have lists within your component and so on. So I think the benefits of using these components, you have more flexibility than you get with just the Django template language because you can include these HTML fragments within the component and then reference them like this. And the other benefit of using these libraries is it encourages you to break down your user interface into components and that can help prevent you repeating yourself and it can keep your websites look and feel feel consistent, which is very important for accessibility and user experience. Now, the final part of this video, I want to very quickly add to our view some data. And this has some titles and some names. And we're going to add that data to our context. And we're going to show how to render these components with data coming from the view, which in many cases would come from the database. Now, if we go back to our index.html file, instead of hard coding these cards, what we're going to do is we're going to create a template for loop. And we're going to say for product and data, and data is the name of the key within our context that we've got access to. So for each product in that data, we're going to create a card out of that product. So let me remove the card below here and we're going to end the for loop. 
So to each card, rather than hard coding some text, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the data. So for each product, we're gonna use product.title, which refers to the title in the dictionary. So we're passing that down as the title to our card, and that will be rendered out within the header. And if we go back to index.html, rather than hard coding hello within this span, we're gonna remove that, and instead we're gonna render out the product's name. The name also comes from the dictionary. So if we go back to index.html, we're going to render that name and we're going to use title case for that name. And this is the code that will be accessed by the children within the card, as you can see here on line seven. So let's now save these and go back to the page. If we refresh this page, we now get three cards, each one coming from a dictionary that's returned by our view. So that's how we would potentially work with database data within these components. And that's all for this video. If you want more videos on Django template language and slippers and other component based frameworks, let me know. If you've learned anything or enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.